Hello and welcome to my workshop. In this video, I'm responding to viewer questions. The viewer question came as part of a comment to one of my previous videos and the comment reads, Hello, keep up the good informative videos. I have a question you may be able to help me with. I just did a simple test in Snapmaker Luban 3-axis CNC section. I just drew a square, created a toolpath to cut one millimeter, created another intersecting square, new toolpath, this time to cut at two millimeters and a third at three millimeters. Pretty simple. Why doesn't the simulation show me what I asked for? It cut around the whole perimeter of all three squares in three millimeters. It doesn't make sense. Thanks, heaps for any questions. Cheers, Jim. Well, Jim, let me see if I can help you with this uh, question and what you're uh, struggling with. Moving on to Luban software, CNC, three axes, and let's do three squares uh, just like Jim did. So my uh, center is bottom left, and let me do one square or at least one shape, and then let's make it a square. I'm gonna make it a two centimeter uh, square, and we're gonna place it right at the origin. Although I do need to remember that in the Luban software, it always takes the center of the object and then it centers it onto whatever the coordinates you set it for. Uh, let's create a second square. This time it is going to be a three centimeter square just to make it a little bit, or a four centimeter square just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, and it said it's an intersecting square, so to me that can mean one of two things. The square is either touching or slightly going on top of the previous square. And in my case, I'm going to go with the second. And let me just move things around and enlarge so we can see properly. So that's some sort of an intersecting square. Uh, and let's do the third one. And make it six centimeters square. And again, intersecting the previous one. Again, at the corner. So in that case, there shouldn't be any issues. So let's see, let's create a two path. And we are going to call this uh, two centimeter square. And we're gonna do a fill. And it's gonna be one millimeter in depth. And my tool of choice is going to be the flat end mill that is 3.175 millimeters in diameter. So we get a two path and we can always change it later on if we need to. Uh, shape number two, the same thing. We create a two path with the second square and this time we're gonna call it four centimeter square. We do a fill. That is a two millimeters and I'm gonna change my tool to the flat end mill. Again, 3.175 millimeter diameter. And finally, we repeat the same thing with the last shape which we're gonna call six millimeter square. Another fill. Three millimeters and changing the two. Everything else remains a default. And that is our three tool paths, uh, all doing three different depths of each consecutive square. Uh, so let's generate the G-code and preview what's going on. Okay, so far pretty good. We do a little bit turning around. We do see the little step pattern right here. The first one, a little step right here. The second and a little step right here, the third. If we uh, zoom in, then we can count one, two, three, four, five, six layers. 
six layers at 0.5 millimeter of a step down that gives you three millimeters so that is exactly the three millimeter big square that we had uh, let's oops so for the first square we have two and for the middle square we have four layers and again at 0.5 millimeter that gives us the right depth now there is this thing here called simulation and if we click on it I'm getting nothing <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure if that's the exact same issue that is reported by Jim or actually maybe if going by some sort of a weird angle we may see something maybe not uh, it's pretty it's pretty hard to tell and even over here uh, right at the beginning we are seeing some sort of a depth then a second depth as well so maybe this simulation is having a little bug here or there and that doesn't do any proper rendering of the g-code uh, what you can do in this case is go to export and load the g-code to the workspace and once we do that basically you can see the exact same thing you're going to see the two path uh, so basically that's the little lines that the uh, um, the machine is going to take and then zooming in and moving left and right you can see that all of them are at dif different depths uh, now uh, i know the simulation is supposed to represent a material and how it's going to look on the material but until such time that this does anything, um, I suggest uh, not using it uh, just because it, it doesn't give you any proper results. So again, let's see, zoom in. Uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't yeah it doesn't it doesn't represent it well at all now let's see if we can change some of the settings and see um, if there's anything that we can manipulate so that it gives us a better result on the simulation work speed plunge speed step down step over stop height no nothing really that can um, do a proper um let's do let's do on the path and let's see if that does anything to the two path itself uh, again regenerating the g-code clicking on the simulation no i i can see a simulation <laughs> i can't see the simulation improving at all so if this is the issue right here with this simulation button I would say do not use it uh, at this point uh, it doesn't seem to be rendering things properly uh, what the best way to do is either just uh, remain the two path open and basically you can see everything that the two path does uh, also every depth uh, as you zoom in and like I said every layer is based on your step down value uh, so you count the number of layers and that's the depth that it will go to uh, so we got two four and six uh, or export your g-code to the workspace and that way again you basically see exactly what you see on the uh, on the previous screen um, so so yeah so that's it now if there is a, a little if right here uh, and if we go back to edit uh, now if the intersecting actually means uh, one square going on top of the other something along these lines then yeah of course the square that has a deeper depth will overtake everything else and that is going to be the maximum depth uh, if you need uh, to have a, like a stepped design uh, I suggest you use something like Inkscape to create the various layers at various heights 
because that way you can have uh, one square at one grayscale, the second square at a different grayscale, and the third square at the third grayscale, and just make sure that all the squares are in the right order. And that way you can get that stepped pattern. Uh, and actually, let's do this uh, right now. Graphics, Inkscape. Uh, and I'm gonna just quickly, quickly do it. I'm not gonna, not going to ensure that uh, all the squares are of equal uh, side measurements. I'm just gonna get three squares. So you make sure that your smallest square is at the top of the stack. Okay, I, I need to <laughs> enlarge because I can't properly work with it. So we gotta make sure that the small square and let's make it grayscale zero so that means it's the lightest of them all or not black sorry 255 that is right at the top yeah there we are second one is the middle square the middle grayscale so 256 divided by 2, that is 176, so that's the exactly 50% grayscale. Yeah, blatant mathematical error. Uh, so 50% grayscale is 128, and the number that I input, 176, is 30 to 31, so we're gonna call it 30 for uh, simplicity's sake. So we're gonna continue with the rest of the video knowing that our little gray is 30% and there might be a small discrepancy in the layer height. Now, back to the video. And the biggest square is the black square, which is going to be the deepest. And we're gonna throw this here. So in that case, we are going to have three different squares at three different uh, depths. Uh, the lighter one being at the top, the, this gray scale being in the middle, and the black uh, being at the very bottom. So that way you can get your stepped pattern if uh, your squares are one on top of each other. And you only want the, um, the addition of the extra space of the bigger square to be cut out and not impact the previous square. Uh, so basically that's what you create and then you create it as a scaled vector graphic uh, I mean create everything to path do a scaled vector graphic and then load it into the Luban software But straight in the Luban software. It's not very easy to get that stepped gradient pattern You do need to create rectangles around your initial square that are deeper and deeper uh, So it might be easier just to go with uh, Inkscape in case you want overlapping squares like we just showed previously uh, and if the only issue is the uh, simulation button right here, then like I said, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, I would stick to the two path or exporting the two path to the workspace. That's kind of going to give you the uh, proper depth and how things are going to look. I went and modified the uh, Inkscape file that we had earlier on with the stack squares to actually include the example that I had in the Luban software where we had the uh, touching squares, of course, uh, three different uh, grayscales and three different locations. And once we import it into Luban, Uh, we choose relief, uh, we do a process and we create a two path. Now in this case we don't need to create a two path for every single object uh, in there. Uh, we know it's a grayscale, uh, so that way if we have calculated things correctly, all we have to do is uh, set the correct target depth, in this case three millimeters. And we are going to use the flat end mill and we save, and once we generate the G-code and preview, I am going to click on the simulation, and it takes a few seconds to complete successfully, uh, remove the toolpath, and now we can see, once we zoom in, we can see an actual relief, and that's, uh, I guess, what I'm looking for as well, see the actual relief of what things would look like uh, when the path gets executed, when the G-code gets executed. So in this case, we know that it works for uh, SVG files, for scaled vector graphic files, but somehow this 
uh, sort of simulation doesn't work for the native objects that you select from the Luban software. Now let's do one more experiment in this case with a uh, stereo lithograph files uh, so that means modeling files and we'll see if uh, that's gonna do a correct uh, rendering of the um, uh, of the simulation of the g-code. Uh, for that we are going to go back remove the uh, current two path and import another object uh, called squares STL so now depending on which side we like orientation front or back and this is what the actually this isn't a really a good example so why don't I go and find uh, what I call it ziggurats so in this case this is what the uh, uh, what it looks like. So we have a center that is at the very top and then we have uh, the sides going down um, and we're gonna go with the top view and we already see from the look here that the stereo lithograph files depending on which side you choose it gets converted to a grayscale and that grayscale is then converted to the right simulation. So let's do a process. Let's create a two path, three millimeters depth, uh, flat end mill. We save, uh, generate the G code, run the simulation, remove the two path, and that's basically what it's looking at. Again, a 3D relief of the grayscale that we set earlier which was based on a stereolithograph file. So basically we know grayscale works, native objects from the Luban software they don't work. So I don't know what the reason is but if you need to see a relief carving as far as what it might look like then stereolithograph files or SVG files are your best options. Now, I know this was a quick answer and not really an answer as to why things are happening aside from, you know, there is gremlins somewhere. <laughs> but uh, use the comments below and let me know if I addressed your comments uh, or helped you with the answer. If not, we can try to find a way to communicate with each other outside of YouTube and maybe find a way to share the uh, Luban files and that way we can see what's going on. Aside from that, uh, if you like this video, make sure to like, share and subscribe and also hit the notification bell to get notified of my future video releases. Also, follow me on all social media channels and consider supporting me on Patreon. All the links are down in the description.